I'm live. Okay. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Friday, one o'clock, and this is where I come in live. I need you to check this screen right here because I don't think I am. Yeah. I am. Okay. Okay. Let me go live on TikTok and Instagram. All right. We're about to go live on every platform. Aha. I'm sorry. We have all these screens here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on and join me here. It is Friday, 1 p.m., and it is time for my live of What the Health is Wrong with You. You guys know I come every Friday at 1 o'clock to talk about our health, and the title, What the Health is Wrong with You, is because most of us who have health issues don't know what's, what's wrong with us, taking all sorts of medications and doing all sorts of things, but at the end of the day, you really don't know what the health is wrong with you. So... I'm Debbie Williams, a board certified nutritionist. I come in to help you learn what the health is wrong with you. Many of us, I would call it mystery illnesses. You're taking prescription drugs. You think you got high blood pressure. You think you have all these things. And, and the test that you get from the doctor shows that you do. But what is the underlying cause? What is the root cause? Why do you have high blood pressure? Why do you have autoimmune issues? Why is something wrong with your thyroid? Why do you always have headaches? Why are you gaining weight? Why are you dealing with inflammation? That's why I set up what the hell is wrong with you because you want to know why you have these things, especially after you are visiting your doctor and you're constantly taking these medications, but you're not getting any better. As a matter of fact, you see, you might be getting worse. So this is what what the health is wrong with you is all about. I just like saying that title sometimes. What the hell is wrong with you? I'm not cursing. I'm saying help. So come on in. Hello, hello, hello. I see the waves over here. So I'm on every channel right now. You're watching me from YouTube. You're watching me from TikTok. You're watching me from Instagram and you're watching me from Facebook. So we're all in there. Today, I have a great topic that I am sharing with you and it's about our gut. The word gut health is the buzzword, it's the trend. Everybody's learning about it, and I'm glad I'm saying it. it's about time. I have been addressing gut health now for maybe three to four years, and now everyone's talking about it, and it's to a point where everyone realized, oh, my issues might relate to my gut. And before I get deeper into our discussion for today, yes, Hippocrates told us 2,000 years ago that every disease begins in the gut. They clowned him. Our modern day Western medicine clowned what Hippocrates says only to now science and research is like, yep, you know what? That gut does have a lot to do with all these diseases. So that's the first thing I want you all to understand. Your issues, your mystery illnesses, and this is what I want to call them. I'm not going to call it high blood pressure. I'm going to call it mystery. Your mystery illness, the things that you're dealing with has a lot to do with an imbalanced gut. And what many people need to learn and understand is that if you learn how to balance your gut, if you find out what your gut is needing, then your issues can be reversed. The way our body is made, God made this body in such a magnificent way. Even though we are born into sin and we are imperfect, and I'm not going to get religious on you, but many of you know that, even in this imperfect body that we live in, the body can heal itself. Think about when you get a cut. You did not heal that cut. You didn't do anything but clean it, put a Band-Aid on it, wrap it up, and cry a little. However, your body system, your cells, the blood, the, the, the minerals, the nutrients, the organs and glands, they all got together to heal that wound, to close that gap, that cut, to stop that blood. All of that wasn't you. So the body knows how to take care of itself. The body knows how to heal. However, man has gotten in the way and thought they have a better way to do this and to no avail. But why I say all this, all of this medication and the things that, are we, that we've been taking is actually disrupting or interrupting the body's way of handling things. Our liver, which is the hardest working organ in our body, can do so much. But because of a lot of things that we have been doing, we are making our liver struggle. And some of the things that we do, we know we do it, but a lot of it you don't. And one of it is your diet. The things that you're eating, you are a contributor to the health of your gut. Your gut does not want all that fatty foods. Your gut does not want the processed food. Your gut does not want all of the, the alcohol. Your gut wants clean vegetation that, again, it takes it back to God. 
God gave us everything that we need. Everything that grows from the ground gives the gut what it needs to be strong and healthy, to build up your immune system and everything else. So we have to address that. But today, my topic is more or less, your gut is talking to you. And why aren't you listening? And when your gut talks to you, it's talking to you with pain. That inflammation you have, that's your gut going, listen, I'm trying to tell you, I got some problems. You don't want to listen? Mm, here's that inflammation on you. Your gut is talking to you. When you're gaining that weight, that's a combination of your gut and your liver because your liver metabolizes fat. When your gut is well taken care of and your liver is not overworked and overprocessed, your liver metabolizes fat. Your liver does everything it needs so the food that you eat is broken down, nutrients are pulled out, toxins are pulled out, and everything is well. But when the liver cannot do what it needs to do, it holds on to the fat. And now you got fat storage, fat pockets everywhere. Now them thighs are bigger than you want it to be. Now you got meat hanging off the arm. And I'm not trying to be smart, but I'm being serious. It is because we have put a burden on our body. So I come real with it. I come with letting you know, listen, we all be like, why did I gain some weight? I want to lose weight. I want to do better. But are you really doing better? Because again, your gut is talking to you. The pain is your body's way, your gut's way of saying I'm having problems. Even it goes as far as your hair loss. That's a gut issue. Let's look at the gut. What is going on in the gut that's disturbed that now it's affecting hair? Because your hair within your body is a living cell. Your hair needs nutrients the same way you need nutrients. And when the gut and the liver and the whole organ system doesn't have what it needs in the form of nutrients, you start to lose hair. The same with your skin, dry skin, acne, psoriasis, eczema. We all need to take it back to the gut. So that's what we are addressing today. So here's the thing I want to say. When we talk about gut health, and I tell you that your gut is talking to you, how many times you have said, I had a gut feeling about something. That's like a common thing. You go, you know what? My gut told me not to do that. But again, the gut was talking. Were you listening? How many times have you heard the saying? Or how many times have you said, go with your gut? That again is a conversation that your gut is like, mm -hmm, let's do this. But it, again, you may do the opposite. You know, how many times have you said, I should have listened to my gut because my gut said. So again, I'm bringing all that up to you to let you know, yes, it does. It starts here. The gut is talking. And are you listening? And what's more important is that our gut actually has a conversation with our brain. There's a conversation going on all the time through something called the vagus nerve. It is a nerve that stems, and I would say, picture it looking like a tree branch. It goes from the brain all the way down to the gut, and they have these conversations. And so when you are stressed and you are dealing with different things, it's a signal to the brain that something is, is not right, and then it, it in return, re, um, it's a reflection on your gut. So we are going to address that today. But one of the things that I want to talk about um, is why this is happening. And then I got a resolution for you, and then I have a special guest for you today, I have a, a personal development coach who specializes in so many different things regarding the gut. Well, not the gut specifically, but your mental health, your mental well-being. And we're going to address that because that's the topic that I want to talk about. It's not just saying talk about gut health. Today, I am addressing stress, anxiety, and the connection with your gut. Now, before I get into all of the, the issues about your gut talking and are you listening, the main thing that I want to address to everyone today is that our mental health, the things that we think with our mind, starts here in the gut. So for all of you who are struggling with stress, you're struggling with anxiety, you're struggling with depression, your moods go up and down, we have to, one, look at what's going on in, with a disturbance in the gut. And within our gut, we have something called the microbiome. So the microbiome is a community of microbes that lives in our body. And, and that micro community consists of bacteria, fungi, and viruses. And as a matter of fact, we have, and this is not me talking, this is research, because you know, I don't talk just to talk. I talk based off of what science has proven. But we have more bacteria in our body system than we have human cells. So what does that mean? That means we're actually more bacteria than we are human cells. Well, they, these microbes in the microbiome actually help with everything that goes on in your body system. 
This is what helps the gut do its job, these microbes. And when there is an imbalance or a disruption of these microbes, the problem is a reflection on you. And specifically when we're talking about today, I'm addressing mental health. One of the things about our gut is that there is a hormone. So 90% of our hormones are produced in our gut, specifically serotonin. Serotonin, most of us know serotonin as the feel-good hormone. Well, that's produced in the gut. But guess what? If your gut is damaged, is if your gut is imbalanced, then you are not able to produce serotonin. You're not able to produce not only serotonin, but you're not able to produce many hormones that you need to function daily. And when we are able to produce the hormones that the body needs, we appear to be a little wacky. And I'm just being honest. But many of us don't know that it's not your fault. It's because the body is not able to produce or the gut is not able to produce the hormones that it needs. A healthy gut supports adequate serotonin levels. So we would need to be able to get our gut healthy, which I'm going to discuss some ways that you can do that um, to help. So one of the things we need to understand is when someone has said, and we've all been there, where somebody was like, you, you're crazy. Something's wrong with you. I'm here to tell you, no, 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 you're not crazy. It's an imbalance in your gut. If you learn these certain steps, and one of them is changing your diet, the other is a lifestyle change. If you learn these specific things, then you will find that your moods, your behaviors, the way you think, how you handle people, how you handle your employer or your employees, how you handle your family and your friends will be completely different. And so that's why I wanna address this today because we live in a world, in a society where everyone seems to be running amok and, and, and looking crazy or acting crazy. And it's so obvious, it's like, mm, they got gut issues. So for instance, someone sent me a comment on YouTube the other day and it was very rude. They, they weren't nice. I did a video and, and they didn't like something. They didn't like me, basically. They was like, yeah, uh, I, I don't like you. And immediately I thought, okay, well, I'm doing this video and I'm sharing information and I'm telling people how to get healthy. Uh, that's it. But I realized I wasn't going to fight back. I wasn't going to comment and be like, well, I don't like you either. Like, no, I wasn't going to do all that because I said, you know what, this person, they're not happy. And an unhappy person means it starts in their gut. So instead, I reached out and go, hey, you want to have a consultation with me? You know, maybe we can talk about what's going on in your life because you sending messages out to people telling them you don't like them and you don't like their look and their lipstick and all that there. It's like, okay, it's okay. There's something else going on. So this is why I want to bring this. And I'm getting all these waves. Hi, everyone. I'm getting all these hearts and loves. I love it, love it, love it. So I want to share with you, if you are a person where you're always moody, you're always irritable, you're always anxious, and even... Many of us don't have a balance of these, the microbiome or the microbes that I shared. And why is that? If you've ever had antibiotics taken at any point in time in your life, even as a child, antibiotics killed off your infection or whatever the reason the doctor gave it to you, but it also killed off a lot of your good microbes. And there needs to be a balance within the body. There needs to be a balance within life, but it, there needs to be a balance within the body with microbes. And so this is one of the ways how we wind up with being moody and behavioral. And this is actually one of the ways where depression becomes the big source or force in your life because there's not enough of the good microbes in there to keep that balance within your body system. So if we can just change our lifestyle, change what we eat, take out the processed food, get rid of the sugars. But again, sugars is not your fault. The craving for sugar is the microbes in your body because you are overrun with microbes. These microbes are calling out to your brain. Your brain, tell her, go to that store and get some donuts. I'm in the mood for some donuts. Get to that Starbucks. That's not you. It's the, it's the microbes in your body that's telling your brain what you need to do. And as a robot, you're like, I'm on my way to Dunkin' Donuts. So wherever you want to go, I'm on my way to the supermarket. And in your shopping cart, it's nothing but a lot of junk. Those cravings, it's not you. It is a gut that's imbalanced. 
your moods, your attitudes, your irritability, your your way of not liking people, your way of being negative. It's not you. It's your gut. And so if we and if you take that opportunity to go, OK, maybe there's something to this. And I always tell you, I tell all of you on my calls, don't take my word for what I'm saying. Do your own research. The evidence is there when we talk about gut health and how it relates to mental health. One thing is really what I'm learning now. I'm, I'm hearing how a lot of psychiatrists and doctors who deal with mental health, one of the things that I'm hearing that many of them do, that they're doing right now, which is great, instead of prescribing a whole lot of medication that keeps you zombie-like and robotic-like, they're prescribing probiotics. And I love that because probiotics is what you need to rebuild your gut system with the right amount of microbes back into the body system. So when I'm hearing doctors are giving you guys probiotics, I'm like, yes, that's what we need. Because at the end of the day, how do you fix a disturbed gut? How do you fix a disrupted gut? One of the things is you got to give the body back what it's lacking. And it's lacking some of the good pro um, pro well, it's lacking probiotics, but it's lacking some of the good microbes. There needs to be a balance. So we have trillions of microbes in the body and they all have a name and they all have a position that they do. So like for instance, there's this um, bifido, bifidobacterium, which is one of the most important um, bacteria strands in the body. It helps with digestion. It helps with removing toxins. It plays a major role. And then we have lactose bacillus, which is also a very important one. And here's a little tip many of you don't know. If you are lactose intolerant, it's likely because you are lacking the micro lactobacillus. All of that, you can research that out. But when we get these microbes back in a balanced state, you will find you handle people so much better. You have your moods and all of who you are is beautiful. So listen to this, do the research, and you'll see that there's a lot of facts behind it. Some of the things before I introduce my guests, because I got to tell you guys about my guests in just a few minutes, I wanted to talk a little bit more about what also can cause the mental health issues within you, the anxiety, the depression, the irritability, the moods going up and down, the, the negative energy, or, or you always, you never have anything nice to say. You're always negative. You always got to find something wrong with something and someone, and it's not you. It could be because your body is dealing with a lot of inflammation. Well, an unhealthy gut can contribute to what we call systematic inflammation, which has been linked to mental health issues. So when, when the gut is inflamed, it can affect your brain, leading to changes in mood and behavior. So inflammation can also impact the way your brain processes emotions. I think that's important for all of you to know. So if you're dealing with inflammation, it's impacting your brain. And in return, it's impacting your emotions. It's impacting your mood. It's, a, it's impacting your well-being. So now let's talk about some of the things that we can do to help it. Or before, and you know, I always write my notes. I always got things to share with you. Um, I wanted to talk about some signs that your gut gives you when it is disturbed. Bloating is one. Uh, a lot of gas is another one. Acne is one where, where when the gut is disturbed, if you got a lot of acne, the body's trying to remove toxins out of the body and the gut helps with that. And so if your gut is disturbed, your body is holding on to lots of toxins, which are now coming out through your skin, which could be why there's acne. But also when the gut is disturbed, your it, it it hurts your immune system. And then you could wind up with an immune related skin disorder like psoriasis or, or eczema um, for that matter. But there are a lot of different things that can cause why your gut is damaged. Now I'm trying to think, do I jump into my wonderful guest who is going to share with you how you can change your mindset? Because remember, if the gut is disturbed, if you are somebody on this call who deals with a lot of anxiety and statistics show out of three people, two of those people deal with mood and, and mood behaviors, anxiety and, and irritability and depression. So that means every other person next to you is dealing with some type of mental health issue. One thing I've noticed, which is good, many people now are 
accepting that there's some mental health issues. Once upon a time, you used the word mental health. It was a taboo word. Nobody wanted to, to discuss it. But now it's, it needs to be an open dialogue. And the reason for that is because there is a way to fix it. There is a way to feel good. There is a way to be happy. There is a way to be happy with who you are, how you look, and all of that. It is just by changing your diet, your lifestyle, eating the right foods. And maybe sometimes you even have to change some of the people that's in your circle. Because if they too are negative, they may reflect on you. So these are some of the things that, that we need to actually do to do that. So when we want to change our gut, we one have to, it's a mindset. And a mindset means now you are starting a new habit. And this is why many people, like when you go on a diet, you don't stick to it because you got to start in the mind first, then you got to make it a habit next. And when it's, a, it, it's in the mind, the mind has trained it. Now it's a habit and now you can stick to whatever goal. It doesn't even have to be weight. Just whatever goal you are trying to accomplish, it starts in the mind first. So today I want to introduce my wonderful guest here. Her name is Brittany Nicole. And she is a personal development coach. Let's bring her in and then I'll tell you more about who she is. Hello, TikTok world. And it's, it's TikTok, TikTok and YouTube Instagram, and all and the social. Hello, social world. <laughs> so Brittany Nicole is a personal development coach that helps people improve their mindset. And so today, because we're talking about that, we're talking about how you can improve your mental habits so that we can work through anxiety and work through stress and work through being irritable and work through just having negative energy or just being a negative person. It starts in the mindset. So before we go into me sharing or asking Britt some questions, do you want to tell them a little bit about yourself? Or? Sure. Yes, I'd love to. So my name is Brittany Nicole. Um, I'm a personal development coach. Basically, my job is to help people to accomplish their goals. And a lot of times, the things that are keeping people stuck, keeping them from accomplishing their goals, is their mindset. So a lot of the work that I do with people is on improving their mental habits, improving the mindset, and getting the mind working for them in their life and in their careers. That's wonderful because, again... It relates so much with anxiety and mm -hmm. depression. It's it, it's in the mind. You got to yeah. tell your mind, yeah, I'm not going to do this. But it's bigger than that. It starts in the gut. Mm -hmm. So when you're eating differently, the whole body changes. But again, it's about the habit. So I wanted to ask you a question because the topic is more or less about mental habits and, and its effect on mental health. Mm -hmm. What is a mental habit? So a mental habit, first of all, I want to clarify what a habit is. A habit is something that we do repetitively. We do it every day. We do it so much that it's automatic that we don't even think about it. Wake up in the morning, you brush your teeth, hopefully. <laughs> you sit on yeah, the toilet, right. you flush the toilet, hopefully. So habits are these repetitive things that we do almost automatically without thinking about it. So a mental habit is thoughts that we have repetitively, automatically, without even thinking about it. And when you think something so frequently, it becomes a belief. Mm -hmm. So your mental habits can be... You can constantly be telling yourself things like, I'm not good enough, or I don't know if I can do this. And that becomes your overall point of view is having self-doubt in yourself. So that's yeah. how I'd explain a mental habit. And that's a great thing. That's that negative. Like you said, you know, a person may think I'm not good enough. And you, it's just a whole lot of negative thinking. That's so common. Mm -hmm. I know everybody on here can relate to that, where you just feel like you're not worthy right. in a sense. So you're basically saying that it starts in the mind. When you change that in the mind, it could change the whole overall person. Yeah. When you unlock the, the limiting beliefs in your mind, you start to realize, oh, I can trust myself to do this. And then you don't have the doubt that you might have had before. So I like to work with people through the things that are kind of like binding them and keeping them constricted. That has a lot to do with people with depression. Mm -hmm. So if you're somebody on this calling and many of us, we've gone through bouts of depression. But what I'm hearing you say is that I guess through your coaching you could actually walk somebody through their, walk them outside of the depression by just changing their, their mental habits. In a sense, yes. Um, I think a lot of times coaching and therapy get confused on who does what. Mm. So a therapist is going to work with more like dealing with the, the mental health concern itself. As a coach, what I would do is 
um, a lot of times the depression, let's use depression for an example. Someone might be feeling depressed because they feel behind in their life. They feel like I wanted to accomplish these things and I never got a chance to. So I work with them to help them like develop the trust and the re-belief in themselves to help them to accomplish the things that, oh, that make them feel like, oh, I, I, I can actually do, I can actually be who I want to be. I can actually make things happen. In the world so it's very action oriented okay. um but i do think that coaching by the way of working with people in their lives and helping them to move forward in their lives definitely does help with mental health as well yeah uh, okay because that again this is what we are addressing here we're addressing our mental health we're coming clean with it we're being transparent with it and even if you're on this call and you're like i deal with it raise your hand and say you do just we all do. when you admit it that's i think that's the first step right to recovery in a sense you got to be like yeah I, I got some issues you know and i love that you said we all do mm -hmm. and it's those who say yeah nothing wrong with me I, that's you get something wrong right there just by saying there's nothing wrong with you. as you say that's one of the things i want to talk about later when we get into the steps because that really is the first part you got to be willing to look at who you are and sometimes mm -hmm. you might see some stuff that you might not like Right. But that's a part of the process, like you said. So as the average person, if you see something you don't like about yourself, what does the ad average person do? Do they tuck it back in and act like it doesn't exist? So um, I would say when it comes to like negative mental habits, we can have um, dialogue with ourselves that's conscious, and then we can have unconscious dialogue. So sometimes it might be, um, you know, you're saying, I I'm so stupid, or why did I do that? Or the unconscious way you might not be looking at yourself is, I'm avoiding an opportunity because I don't think I can um, accomplish it, it. Mm -hmm. or I don't want to go out because I gained a few pounds and I don't want anybody looking at me. Mm -hmm. So, um, not, it's, it's not always an intentional confronting. Like I don't want to look at myself. Sometimes it's just so uncomfortable that you avoid it. Mm, that makes sense. I mean, how many of us can relate to that, that you avoid situations because it's uncomfortable and you don't want to deal with it. But you understand as long as it's uncomfortable and you don't want to deal with it, it's still holding you back. It's mm -hmm. like shackles or chains on you. And if we are trying to move forward in our life for whatever it is, then you got to face it. You'd be like, okay, I need to deal with it. So what are some common negative mental habits you observe in people? So I would say the first one is like we talked about, it's the negative dialogue. It's the telling yourself bad things about yourself. Um, you're, you might be prone to minute diminishing your um, accomplishments, um, having doubt and not doing, you know, avoiding situations because you don't think that you can handle it. But actually I was, I was planning on talking about negative self-talk and comparison, but as you were talking about gut health earlier, I think actually a um, negative mental habit is avoiding your gut instincts. Like you were talking mm. about how <laughs> good the brain and the gut communicate with the vagus nerve, which is true. And those are sig that's information. You know, so if you're in a habit of ignoring that information, what decisions are you making in your life that your gut knows things sometimes like way before you consciously realize it. Mm -hmm. So your gut sometimes is telling you, don't talk to that person. They don't like you or don't avoid that situation because that's not good for you. When you're avoiding those in those impulses, I think that you're working against yourself. So I call that a negative mental mm. habit. That's good. Um, and then the other mental habit that I would say is really, really common, especially with women, is comparison. So we've all heard the phrase, comparison is the thief of joy before. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of true, but I also think that there is a constructive way to compare yourself. If you are looking at someone as inspiration or like, oh, how can I learn from them? What did they do that I can right. you know, learn and, and I can aspire to be like them? But that mindset, it requires you to have um, already a sense of belief in yourself that you can have what they want. And a lot of times that's not what we're doing. When we're mm. comparing ourselves to people, we're putting somebody on a pedestal. Yeah. They're here. I'm here. They have this thing that I want and I can never have it. And so we're sizing ourselves um, up next to them. And that does not feel good. Mm. And we do it all the time when we're scrolling on social media or we're watching TV and we're looking at how people look and what people have and what people's lives are like. Mm. Um, and so yes. that really is counterintuitive to building trust with yourself and, and having a healthy mindset. Wow, that's deep. I, I'm hoping many of you are listening to that. That's like really to the point where like, you know what, you're right. We, we, we do do that to ourselves. So how can we improve our mindset um, by improving our, our mental habits? How, how do we do that? So you, you touched on this a little bit earlier, but it really starts with like being willing to look. You got to go to that closet where the skeletons are and you're going to, you're going to have to open it and whatever falls out. Go to the out, closet, 
open up the skeletons, out. let them fall out. You have to I, I, clean it up, vacuum cleaner, all room, of it, all of get it. the skeletons out. You can hang the skeletons back up if you want to, nice and neatly and tucked, but you, you have to open the door. You have to be willing to look at yourself in the mirror. And that's actually the hardest part. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at yourself, then you have to acknowledge not only your strengths, but your weaknesses, not only your accomplishments, but your mistakes. And but that's having like a truthful, honest, intimate relationship with yourself is the first part. So being willing to do it, one. Two, I would say, and I say this because I have a background in data analytics. The second step to me is gathering mental data. And mm -hmm. I recommend people to do that by way of journaling. Mm -hmm. So when you're, when you're journaling, you're writing your thoughts, you don't have to have any specific technique. It doesn't have to be any specific way, but this is a way for you to observe the way that you think we have they say 60 to 90 um, thousand thoughts a day wow so when you start to actually journal now you have data where you can see this is what i'm thinking because you're reading time. back what you just wrote about yourself you can see That's what deep. you're thinking about who you're thinking about what situations you're finding yourself questioning things in so having a structured way of like getting intel on your own thoughts is is the next step for you know being able to change what those habits are so after a period of journaling then i would say you have to develop the ability to self-reflect and i've been journaling since i was seven so i have a journal that's got like 10 years worth of data on mm. myself and i from time to time i can go back to my five year ago version of myself and see what she was thinking and how she's grown and as you, you know, collect that information on yourself, you refine, you refine your, um, your process, you, you identify trends in the way that you think. And once you know what those habits are, then you can start to challenge them. I love it. This is, the, this is where the action happens. So let's say I have a, a, a common trend of, of imposter syndrome. I commonly think, you know, I can't do this. Or let's say as a coach, I'm like, I don't know if I can coach people well. I don't know if I can get people results. Um, I can start to challenge that by collecting proof, like maybe in the, mm. the, the form of customer testimonials. And, mm -hmm. I, and I do. I keep messages and things that my, my clients have sent me. But when I, I have those moments, too, I have. where, I where have I'm like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know if I'm I good have, enough. I've had them. Let me just say this. Mm -hmm. so, so you guys know I've been a part of what she said. So you see I'm live now, right? And I don't know if, if you follow me from the first live, I would come on and be like, hi, I'm Debbie Williams. <laughs> and I'm going to show you how to make a juice. I was real timid. But I was, I was coming out of my comfort zone because I was like, I can't do live. I'm going to mess up. I'm going to say all these grammatical wrong words and, and people are going to look at me. And then I just thought, you know what? I am ser I'm a servant and I have a message to tell. And it's about me. It's not about me. It's about me sharing ways to heal the body, ways to eat right, ways to talk about our mental health, our, our weight gain, our thyroid issues, our high blood pressure, our menopause, our hormone issues. So I just came live. So I appreciate you saying that because I had to, I had to just do it. My assistant was telling me since last year, you know, you need to go live, right? And I was like, mm -mm, we're not doing that. I'm sorry. I need to do videos where I can edit them first. And she kept saying, you, you know, you need, and then more people that I would meet, they'd be like, do you do any lives? And then I was like, yeah, no, that's not me. So I prayed about it and I was like, okay, I'm gonna come live. Whoever show up, I was always afraid. I'm only gonna have two people on here. But even if it's two, the two came to support me. Thank you, thank you. But actually <laughs> every week I get thousands of people tuning in so I can relate to that. So from that information, you guys gotta, like she said, open up that closet. Mm -hmm. Don't let them skeletons start falling out. Because what I know about all of us as an individual, as a person, we all want to do better, but we always tend to find reasons why we can't, why we shouldn't, why there's not enough time in the day. Why? And so, and so you, never, you never move forward. And it's like your feet are stuck in cement. You, you see everybody else progressing, but you're not. So what this is saying is no matter what it is, you can make that goal set, but it starts. You got to have the mindset. Have that it brain. starts from the mindset. And so how do we tie all that into gut health? It's because if you're having a gut health issue, you have to change your mindset. Because the first thing you have to do is you got to change how you eat. Mm -hmm. You got to change. You got to get rid of stuff. You got to open up that pantry and start throwing out all those canned goods and them potato chips and them cookies and 
all of that stuff. You got to open up the refrigerator and get rid of all those different things. And then we got to replace it. See, it's not that we're getting rid of it, but we're replacing it with better foods. We're replacing it with nutrient dense foods that help the body, that, that help your microbiome, that helps your gut, that helps your liver, your heart and all that there. We have to drink more fluids. We have to sleep better. But all of that comes when you start eating better. You will find your whole mindset mm -hmm. changes. There's things you won't, you don't want sugary foods anymore. When you eat something sugary, you're like, yeah, poo. how did I ever eat that? Because after you change your mindset, which will start to change your gut health, what happens also every 14 to 21 days, your palate changes. So all the processed foods and the burgers and the hot dogs and the bacon. I know I had people mad when I was like, yep, you got to get rid of that bacon. When you get rid of all that stuff, when you go back to eat it again, you're like, how did I ever do this? So this is why I brought Brittany in because I needed you to understand for all of you who say, yes, I want to make changes. I want to eat better. I want to try to heal my gut, but I don't know what to do. It starts with the mindset. Is there another part of this? Because I know you have, but she has a gift that she wants to give to all of you on here. Like she mentioned, you have to journal. And that's the first step. You really do. You got it. When you write and you look back at you, what you wrote later, that's when them diaries came in years ago. I never had a diary. I, I, but now as I, because I am a content creator, I'm writing all the time. And sometimes I go back and find stuff that I wrote two years ago. And I looked at stuff and I said, who wrote that? And I said, but it looks like my handwriting, but it was so good. So I, a lot of, and this is the truth. I'm like, oh my God, this information is amazing. And then I keep looking and I go, but that's my handwriting. So when you journal, it the connection between your mind, body, and soul connects. So do you want to share what you want to yes. give to anyone who's wanting to change their mindset, their mental health, and their gut health? This is where it starts. So I created a resource which I call the Seven Day Mental Detox. And it, it's interesting because the process that you're talking about improving your gut is kind of like the process for changing your mindset. You improve your gut, you take the bad stuff out, you put better stuff in. And so the seven day mental health um, detox, it basically works like that. Um, it's a, a journaling workbook that you can use to track not only your bad thoughts, but your good thoughts through a period of a week. And so that's how you can start to see, okay, this is, these are the things that I'm telling myself. This is how I talk to myself <laughs> right. on a daily basis. We're, we're so used to our own voice. Like our thoughts play like a, a playlist. You know, uh -huh. it's just background music. But when you take it, you put it on paper, and now you can see, oh, wow, yeah. this is what I'm thinking. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And then after that, you reflect on when did you first start to think these thoughts? Where did they come from? Start to challenge those thoughts by, mm -hmm. by, by trying to disprove them as true. And that is the process, just like you take the, the sugar and all the stuff out, and you put some vegetables in. Right. This is that, but for your mind. And because the gut and the mind are so intertwined mm -hmm. the whole thing works together that is amazing i need one of those books okay <laughs> when we get off of here we're gonna have to give you one but i just Send want you to know this book it's a journal that you are giving them yes this is, this is completely free yes so if you want to get her mindset what is it called so it's the seven day mental detox okay um we a have mental detox a mental Love detox it. we we all could use it i need a mental detox everybody needs a mental detox in these streets so it's completely free <laughs> sit in these Easy streets we all need it you can use it from any device you don't need to it's not complicated at all it's just a process for you to spend time with yourself and get to know your own Love thoughts it. get in that closet Closet. Okay, open, Love the, open it. the closet. That's Love what it. it is. So if you want to, because I, I need one of the books. Okay, okay, I'll send you that. <laughs> if you want one of her journals, um, we will have a link for you to get one. She will send it to you. It's like a digital copy and they can yes, print it out. Yes. Right? The link Listen, will be included and you just you enter your email. All of you who is trying to build up your mental health. You need this seven day mental detox. And you know, I love the word detox because I'm always loving the detox. <laughs> but again, a mental detox. That's where it begins. You know what? A mental detox is, like she said, it's, it relates to the gut. Because when you, get, when you do a mental detox, guess what you're getting rid of? The things and the people that don't need to be there. Like, so there may be somebody you're like, I don't, you know what? I don't, don't want to be with him no more. But I don't she know what happens. It's that mental <laughs> detox. After you finish writing down everything, it might be in seven days. You'd be like, you know what, Tyrone? It's the is place, it, is it Tyrone it's, called Tyrone? Did yes, you pack up the bags? It's called Tyrone, it is. Call Tyrone to come and get help get your stuff out of here. You, you never know, know where it's going to take you. You huh? get to know yourself a lot better. 
You do. You do. And then it, that's the part of that mental health change. And when you get to know yourself better, then now you're like, yes, I'm ready to eat better. I don't want any more bacon. Get out of here, bacon. Then you go home and you cleaning up that pantry and your family is looking at you. But, but Ma, where you going with, where you going with my Cheerios and my Cocoa Puffs? They out of here. They out of here. So we, it starts in the brain. So please, um, we'll have a link for you to uh, order. It's not order because she's giving it to you guys for free. <laughs> right. To get it, an online copy of it. And also to keep in touch with her. And we also will have information for you if you have questions for her. Um, she is amazing as you see how she speaks. and <laughs> <laughs> But she knows her stuff, okay? So I'm not going to keep everybody. But here's what I wanted to, sh- to say. That because this was addressing your gut your mental health, your mindset, and mental habits. One of the things we need to do when we are on this journey for gut repair is we need to see what's going on in our gut. So in my practice, I use a company called Viome. I love Viome Labs. Viome is one of the best companies for gut testing because you need to see what's going on in your gut. You need to see, do I have enough bifidobacterium? Am I missing lactobacillus? Do I have this one and that one? And again, remember I said there are trillions of microbes in your body. So if you really want to know the steps to heal the gut, you got to get a gut test. You can't do this without it. And even if you go to Western medicine doctors, they're not doing no gut tests. Maybe they are, maybe they will. But I will have a link in here because if you order a gut a gut test through Viome, they've actually given me a discount code that I can give you to order it. Now, I do gut testing. My family do gut testing. It's something that I do in my practice. You can't be a part of anything for me to help you to help your gut and your liver and your kidneys without a gut test. So just to keep you clear, let me be transparent. A gut test is a fecal test. Because everything that's going on in your body, in the microbes, is in your feces. So you will, you can order this online. And the thing about it is a self-testing. And I love all of these labs that are coming up for ways you don't have to go into the doctor's office. You can do these things at home. I will send you a link to Viome and I will send you the discount code if you want to start with a gut test. And I will say, please do, because it's going to open the door to so many things in your life. You'll be like, oh my God, this is why I had this. This is why I had this problem. It all tells from the gut. And so with this test, it's a fecal test. They will send you a kit to your home with all the instructions. And no, you don't have to touch nothing. It's real simple on what you need to do. They also send you a self-addressed uh, postage kit to send it back to them. And within a couple of weeks, you'll have your results that's telling you all about your gut and all about you, by the way. Now, what I also love about the Viome test is remember, gut health is about your diet. In your Viome test, it's also going to tell you about foods you need to stop eating. Why? Because these are the foods that are feeding the bad bacteria. These are the foods that are making them grow. These are the foods that you didn't know your body does not like. So for an example, you could be a person that likes Brussels sprouts. But once you get your Viome test, it, it will tell you, nope, Brussels sprouts, no, 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 your body, the bad guys like the Brussels sprout. And here's what Brussels sprouts are doing. But most cruciferous vegetables has something in it called oxalates. And a lot of times, if you are nutritionally deficient or you're having digestive issues, your body is not breaking down oxalates right. So you are a person, when you eat cruciferous vegetables like a broccoli or Brussels sprouts or a cauliflower, you find your stomach low and you're gassy. That's that's meaning you got a lot of the bad bugs in there and we got to get it out. But the Viome test is going to tell you what foods you should be eating. They're going to give you a whole list of superfoods that you need to add to your diet. So that's encouraging the new way of eating. That's encouraging encouraging your gut health, your journey to gut health. So start with a Viome test where they're going to tell you about what you should eat. They're going to tell you about the things you need to stay away from. And there's some other things that they also supply to you. But this is the first step of your gut healing journey. And again, like I said, I offer this in my practice along with the hair mineral analysis that I've shared with you before because your hair tells the story of your life When you want to know what's going on in your health, you need to know if you're minerally deficient, what you're lacking in the form of calcium and magnesium and potassium and iron and copper and zinc. You need to know that. And you also need to know what microbes you're lacking. When you put the two of these together, once you analyze that together, you have a journey to set your path straight. 
So you can, I'll put a link in there too if some of you want to order a hair mineral analysis because it's going to tell you what toxins you have, what's going on with your body, and the biome test is going to tell you what's going on here, and you put those two tests together now. I also offer a consultation if you want to do a consultation. I also offer other programs if you want to put it all together with me. But if you want to do this on your own, and maybe once you do it, you may say, I need your help, Debbie, then you know how to reach out to me. But here I want to share with you, these are some of the first steps. So please get her book, get the journal, write what you need to talk about every day in it, then come back to it and be like, oh man, I'm jacked up. <laughs> it's just like I said, remember I said, that I would go back and look at some of the things I wrote as content, and it was so good. And I was like, was that me? So when you write, when you, when it, when you take it from your brain to the paper, you will find, like, it will open up your mind in such a way that you didn't even know that it, that, that was you. Can I so say we'll about send journaling, that too? Yes. To add on that, I think people sleep on journaling. I think and they do, it's too. such a great I tool did. because... Not everybody can get a therapist. Not everybody can get a coach. That's not everybody's going to be able to hire you or me. But most of us can journal. Yeah. And so it's a it's a, a very powerful way for you to move things forward. I in love your it. Life. It empowers you. I love that. For free. I, I love it. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. For Thank you, me. Coach Brittany Nicole, for being here today. What's your website? So my website's CoachBrittanyNicole.com. I am on all socials as Coach Brittany Nicole. My podcast is the Coach Brittany Nicole Podcast. Um, uh, all of my information can be found at all of those places. Yes, 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 yes. So Thank I'm you. hoping you guys learned something today about the gut. Remember, we're addressing the mental side of gut health. And why if you're anxious and you're stressed and you're depressed and you're moody and you're negative, it's the gut. So we talked today about ways that you can improve yourself and it's, it's possible, it's, but it starts with habits and then there's so much that can happen. So thank you guys for joining me today. Of course, you know, uh, Jay, I need that. You know, at the end of every lesson, they tell me what I got to tell y'all, what I got going on. <laughs> so today, again. The Viome. Now, if you guys go to Viome.com, here's what I want you to use. Use the code AXDEBBIE. We'll have a link for Viome, but if you just go on your own, use the code AXDEBBIE when you go to Viome to get your gut test because there we get a percentage. You get maybe a $50 or whatever Viome is doing at the time. You're going to get a nice little discount. So when you go to Viome for your gut test, use AXDEBBIE for your discount. Here's something that I wanted to share with you guys. In here, I did tell you about, which I think is so phenomenal, that many times now we all don't have to go run to a doctor's office to see what's going on because there's so many self-care ways to take care of yourself, like the biome test. You don't have to run into a lab to take a look and see what's going on in your micro, micro, uh, microbiome. You can order a test. You can do a lot of things on your own. Well, Amazon, okay, yes, the same Amazon that you buy stuff from and all your guilty pleasures, Amazon has just put out what they call their virtual health clinic. And in, the, in Amazon's virtual health clinic, they have licensed doctors and nurse practitioners that you can actually contact because maybe you have a problem that you don't want to go to the doctor for. But there's about 40 different common um, symptoms that they treat. So they treat things like serious things like UTIs and, and uh, yeast infections and colds and flu. And they even, they treat COVID-19. There's so many different things. They, they treat male, what is it, male hair loss and they treat dandruff. And they, this, Amazon, you know they gotta get it. They get everything. So to me, it's a game changer. So I'm gonna send you a link to check out Amazon's health clinic. It's the next step, I love it. A lot of us don't want to go to the doctor. You may have flu symptoms. And here's the thing. Because you're dealing with a doctor or a nurse practitioner, they, you, you, what will happen is you can get on a video conference with them, if that's what you choose, or you can do a message-based com conference with them. After you discuss your symptoms with them, they, if it's necessary, will actually send you to uh, uh, your local pharmacy to pick up whatever drug you may need. So, for instance, say you got a yeast infection. You, don't wanna, you know it's yeast. And you don't feel like going into the GYN and doing all of that, contact them. They got you. You know, uh, so many things. A UTI. You know it's a UTI. You run into the bathroom, all kinds of things. You can actually do this through Amazon's virtual health clinic without having to go to urgent care and all these other things. And it's really, really, really reasonable. So I am going to send you all a link here to check out Amazon's virtual clinic. Because again, it's a part of what I talked about. Self-care, where 
We can try to do things on our own. I'm not saying we're, we're getting rid of the doctor, but if we can do some things on our own first, then when we at least get to the doctor, we've taken care of some things. So that's what I wanted to share with you guys today. Also, she wanted me to let you know about my juicing one-on-one. -on -one. We didn't talk about juicing today because I thought after I finished with Brittany, I was going to go and show you guys how to make a gut healing juice. But we decided we're going to do that next week for you. But I have a juicing one-on-one -on -one course that I developed. You can find that um, on my site at either the digitalwellnessacademy.com or askdebbieaboutherr.com and you will see all of the different courses and things that I have there. And the other thing we wanted to tell you guys this week is you know I got a hairline. My, my hair oils is buy one, get one for 50% off. Oh, okay, I, I stay in my lane. I don't do the marketing because I'm like, geez, that's a lot. 50% off? But yeah, buy one, get one, 50% off. All oils and sizes. No code needed? They're killing me here, but okay. <laughs> no code needed. Go to hairandscalpmeds.com because you know I'm that nutritionist that's about hair and skin and health. And my hairline, if you're new here, my hairline is big. My hairline, my hair care line, I should say, because when I say hairline, people are like, what's wrong with my hair? <laughs> but my hair <laughs> care line is a nutritionally based, plant-based line to help us restore our hair because our hair needs nutrients just the same way our body do. So if you go to hairandscalpmeds.com, we have for, I think, just the weekend, the last four days, she said, buy one, get one 50% off, all sizes, no code needed. They're killing me here, but it's fine. You can also get a hair mineral analysis, which I talk about all the time. Um, this month we have it where it's $30 off of the hair mineral analysis using the code analysis. Now my team will have all the notes in here. You can find this, if you want to go back to look at what we're talking about, you'll find this on YouTube, the whole one hour on YouTube and all of the information, all the descriptions and even all of Brittany's information will be on the YouTube channel in the description box. And last but not least, oh, they're killing me here. Okay. In my hair mineral analysis, you get $30 off. If you want to do a hair mineral analysis, and I promise you, everybody should do this at least once a year. This is the best way. This, You know how you go to the doctor for your annual checkup? Your hair tells the story of your life. If you want to know what's going on in your body, take some samples of hair, and then let's have a conversation. But not only that, it said it includes one group coaching session. They killing me here, but okay. So you get one group session with me if you are going to do a hair mineral analysis. And last but not least, we have a 30% off my skincare line, which we still haven't really pushed it out the door yet using the code SKIN. And you can find all of these products, the hair mineral analysis, the hair line, the hair care line product, the skincare line at hairandscalpmeds.com. So thank you all for joining me this week on what the health is wrong with you. I hope from this, what the health is wrong with you, you found what the health was wrong with you. I'll see you next week when we do our gut healing juice. Sorry. Bye. Okay, hold.